What did you make of the session to start the week? James, altogether a pretty disappointing session for the Australian share market, given that on Friday we saw the US markets up by around about 2%, and now SPY futures pointing to a 1% gain on the Aussie share market. And in actual fact, we only managed a gain of 0.2% by the end of the session. Once again, we did see extremely low volumes, only $3.7 billion being traded. So it does look like a lot of investors, traders, still on the sidelines, despite the developments that we've seen in Europe over the weekend. In terms of technicals, it was quite Quite interesting what was happening today as well. I just have the intraday graph behind me and you can see the high of the session was reached earlier on and that high was at 4,365 points which also represents the highest point we've already seen in November so far. So that 4,365 point level, uh, a stiff point of resistance for the Australian share market and not that far away from 4,371 points which re represents a 50% retracement level from that downtrend that we saw in April, April to the end of October. All up though, if we have a look across the market, it wasn't surprising to see the strength in the banks, but by the end of the session, we had seen a pullback in the major miners, BHP Billiton down by 0.8%, and Rio Tinto down by 1.1%, despite some strong gains in commodities in Asian trade. We saw silver, gold prices rising, and copper prices were also a highlight. So unfortunately, the Australian market in with a disappointing performance, despite the leads that we've seen from Europe, US, as well as the positive de developments in Europe over the week. David Ford for, for Italy and I suppose by extension Europe. We are seeing some political hurdles being uh, being met in uh, Europe and that was seen as a positive this morning. So we have a new Prime Minister in Greece as well as in Italy. In fact, Mark are really looking towards that. the Italian uh, Prime Minister uh, Mario Monti or Super Mario is, is already being nicknamed uh, for some solutions. And I guess if we have a look at Italy, there's really three areas that the market's looking towards. First of all is austerity, second is growth and third is uh, ongoing debt levels. So if we have a look at which area Super Mario is going to impact the most. It's really these austerity plans. If we have a look at growth, that's still going to be kept back by um, the single currency that we see across Europe. Usually when you do see weakness in an economy, a currency weakens off to help offset that. And of course, we don't see that in Europe. And then if we have a look at borrowing costs, we know that the European Central Bank has probably been quite active, but how long it can continue to do so and what type of funds at its disposal is a question that the market's asking about. One thing that the market's going to be watching very closely tonight is the Italian bond auction. We do see a five-year bond auction, so that's going to be watched closely. And we do get a raft of numbers coming out of Europe as well, including France as well as Germany's GDP numbers as well as some uh, some uh, uh, other economic numbers there. So that's going to be watched very closely. But I think the important thing for markets in the short term is going to be this five-year auction tonight. Julia, it's interesting. Obviously, markets uh, taking some confidence as, as Henry and yourself have just mentioned, I suppose, from the developments in Italy, in Greece, but it just seems like for so long now we've been sort of trading on headlines and I'm just not sure what's to stop a headline coming out in the next couple of days that the market takes as a negative read and suddenly seeing a big sell-off again. If we have a look, the market is still being driven by the headlines and the problems in Europe, and that's not going to disappear because Italy has a new prime minister. If we have a look at the Italian situation, they've still got about 280 billion uh, euros worth of debt, which is maturing in the next 12 months. And of course, while borrowing costs are below 7%, it is believed that they've come down below 7% because the European Central Bank has been active. And if they're going to continue to support Italy's uh, borrowing costs, then I guess a big question mark on is, is on how big the purse is and of course Germany is uh, going to kick up a pretty big stink if it's go going to have to keep on funding uh, the, the borrowing costs of some of the other European nations. So Europe's uh, situation and problems far from solved. I guess the short term positive was that we did see a bit of a stabilisation in terms of the political situation and the austerity plans uh, which are needed for Italy. But in terms of the other questions, it's going to take a little bit longer than a weekend to solve those problems. It's I think no perform Julia a bit of corporate news doing the rounds talk us through Paladin close up about 8% despite uh, unveiling a loss well, Paladin uh, was up by 8.1%. And if we have a look at what that loss was driven by, it was uh, an impairment to its Kayla Kira project in Malawi. And if we have a look at that project, well, a lot of that 
uh, information was already in the market. We knew that there were planned shutdowns as well as unplanned shutdowns, which resulted in about six weeks of lost production. And we saw that coming through in terms of the production reports. The good news is that it does look like a lot of those uh, bottlenecks have been resolved now, and they're getting back to their uh, target target of 90% of design capacity there. Also some bullish comments coming through in terms of uranium prices going forward as well as uh, the supply outlook for uranium in the uh, near to mid term saying that we're probably going to see a supply deficit um, because we're still seeing some strong demand even post Fukushima. So Paladin having a good session up by 8.1% on the back of those bullish comments and of course the loss in production was already known in the market so that was already priced into the share price.